Welcome to <coughs> 2024. Happy birthday. Happy New Year. All right. Um, in case you don't know who we are, I'm Erin. And I'm Sarit. And we're on a mission to transform the lives of millions through the same movement, nutrition, and lifestyle habits that have transformed our And in the back, that would be our dog. So never mind him. Today, actually, he's very good. So today we're going to kick off on a really strong note, and we're going to talk about five sustainable mindset tools that you need to make sure that you execute in order to make sure that your banging body transformation in 2024 is going to continue to go up in a forward trajectory. And I want to say the purpose of this, uh, and we're going to be doing a live videos at the beginning of this year for the next two, three weeks whatever. And we'll decide after that. But the purpose and intention is to really get you started on the right foot, to really make sure that you have a strong start and some good momentum with some good tools, with some good strategies, with some inspiration and motivation. At the beginning of the year is always the easiest part of the year for people to follow through with what they say they're going to do. Okay. So our intention is to give you what you need to just go the next step. Don't try to think about February, March, April, the end of the year. Think about today. That's it. We're going to give you tools that you need to be successful to start strong, but not just start strong because that's the easy part to stay strong and to finish strong. If we have anything to do with it, our mission, our intention is that you feel proud of how you showed up for yourself, for your health, for your, um, for how you can become the best version of you possible by the end of the year. So we're kicking it off today and you can find, uh, if you go to, I don't know where you're watching this, but there are more videos that we've scheduled to go live over the next few days that you can actually RSVP to commit yourself to them, show up to them, do yourself a favor this year, do others a favor this year, share good things with them. Don't, don't keep what's helping you away from somebody else. Share the love. That's my intention. This is my message to myself. Um, is point people in the right direction, give them good, do good, be good, and you will have good. Amen. I love it. So I want to know from you guys, I see some of you in the chat and some of you come up as Facebook user. If you know that you are ready to make 2024 your most fulfilling and your best year yet, let me see you go ahead and drop a 24 in the chat. So now today we're going to be talking about five sustainable mindset shifts to create a kick-ass 2024 transformation. Body transformation. Body transformation. Um, and part of this is also the rest of your life transformation. Yes. And, you know... We've had literally thousands of people go through our programs. And the reason why we're starting off the first episode in the series by talking about a mental perspective is because in order for things to change, that being in order for our body to change, in order for uh, fitness to change, in order for home to change, in order for a life to change, who is the first person that needs to change? The answer is me. So now we can give you tools and tips all day long. And if we don't set the stage with regards to what are the mental perspectives that you must own, by the way, we're going to give you an action step by the end of today so that you cannot, so that you won't just be consuming what we're telling you. You'll also be executing based on consuming because that's how you create change. Then everything in your life will stay the same. Okay. So if you're the same at the end of 2024, as you are right now, it's a problemo. Yes. And let's talk about why that's a problem because Actually, that's like number three. That's uh, that's number uh, two. That yeah, there, there's number two. True, true. 
Actually, yes. Let's just let's just lead with that let's because we have a good story. Slide into okay, it. so go ahead and drop nutrition in the chat if you're like, dude, like food is one of my biggest problems. Whether you're like, I struggle with stress eating, I struggle with emotional eating, or you know, maybe when it's in front of me, I just feel like I gotta have all of it. I remember. Or I eat when I'm bored or I eat because other people are eating or I eat because somebody gave me something to eat. Yeah. If, if this is you, go ahead and drop food in the chat and there's no shame here. Um, this actually reminded me when we were, so for Christmas, we went over to Aaron's aunt's house in Tennessee. And uh, when we got their Christmas day, they were exchanging gifts and your aunt got for your uncle a massive bowl guys like oh we have big bowls in this house when i say massive i'm like it's the biggest bowl i've ever seen it was probably like this yeah and and like open open like one of those bowls that you could also like fill up like a pyramid like it's nobody's business so she so he opened it up and he's like oh and then she's like I got it for your popcorn. And he's like, guys, I've got this weakness. And, you know, like I can eat an obnoxious amount of popcorn. He didn't say that word for word, but I'm like, you see the size of the bowl. And I was just like, I know that I can eat. And, and like that's a lot. the size of that bowl was insane. Impressive. Like, do you even think that you Impressive. could eat that much? If I really wanted to, yeah. If I was watching a movie or something, probably yeah. I could slam it all. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, seeing by seeing, the handful, seeing your guys's comments, emotional eating and sugar addiction, boredom, eating a hundred percent food, cookies are my kryptonite. Okay. Okay. I'm actually gonna. It's really on. actually it's really um, helpful when you guys are chiming in here too in the comments. We're not doing these videos for ourselves. We we I talk to myself every day in the shower already. I don't need to be talking to myself more. Yeah. These are for you. So when you interact and you engage and you comment, it gives us more understanding of where you're at and how we can serve you. So thank you uh, for participating. And if you're if you're used to hiding, stop doing that this year. You, if you're never seen, you never get support. We cannot yeah. see you if we do not see you. That's just with anything, not yeah. even just with us. Yeah. Stop. Don't hide anymore. Um, you know, it takes a lot of courage to step out into the light. It takes a lot of courage to say, um, I'm struggling. It takes a lot of courage to say, I don't know how to do something. I want support with something. It takes courage. And it's very admirable to the people that, that care and respect and understand what it takes to come out into the light and say those things. So I just encourage you, um, if you're used, if you're used to hiding, um, or just thinking you're going to do it by yourself and, and you should know what to do and you'll be able to figure it out. Um, it's not the case. Nobody can do it by themselves. So mm -hmm. yeah. utilize people in this community, utilize us, utilize other people that you uh, admire, respect, look up to, um, aspire to be like, and all of that. So, yeah, beautiful. So actually like to give, to give yourself like a framework to work with, like, I would, and if you could share it in the chat too, that'll be amazing. On a scale of one to 10, where would you relate your current level of uh, relationship with food. 10 being I have complete control with how I think about food, how I act in front of food. I am in charge and I feel confident all of about all of my food choices versus one being food owns me. Food owns me. So just to give you a framework what we're going to dive into next will be a concept that will allow you to start shifting your relationship with food. Doesn't matter whether you're a 10, it's probably because you're, you've, you're executing at that level and you've overcome a lot of steps, or maybe you're being enlightened by this for the first time. Point being is that food is fuel. So a great question for you to ask yourself, okay, so I see on average, you guys are like based on these responses are mostly like between five and ten. seven ish. 
So that's good, which means that you've that's come a, you've you've come probably a long way. I don't know where you were a year ago or two years ago, and we've got work to do. So a great way to start thinking about food is food is fuel, which is true. Is it any wonder why? You know, like we were all cavemen, like hundreds of thousands of years ago. And like, if you look at photos of cavemen, they're all like, you know, really jacked and hairy. And, you know, as we got more advanced, we lost the hair and the belly got bigger. Right. So food has become extremely convenient and food has also become really processed. So if we look at food as being this thing that I can put in my mouth, well, not all food is created equal. So how you think about food is going to determine the outcome that you will have in turn. So a great question to ask yourself as you are improving your relationship with food is, what is the purpose of this thing that I'm eating? This is actually something that I, I work on specifically with some of my clients who are learning to shift their relationship with food because eventually you want to get to a point where it is a habit and it doesn't matter what the external circumstance is, whether you're at a football game, whether you're at a Christmas party, whether you are on a day, that whatever it is that you put in your mouth is number one, in alignment with your intentions. And depending on, you know, wherever you want to go, you want to make sure that it has a purpose. I want to share a story because this was the actual turning point from when I felt like a, uh, I'm just going to say it the way that I thought it, a fat, sloppy, ugly, unlovable, disgusting, lazy human being. It's how I thought about myself. This was in 20 or 2008, 2007, 2008, when I was pushing 180 pounds. And one of the most significant shifts that came for me, um, I end, actually ended up losing about 40 pounds. And then I got into figure competition and I developed a, a terrible, like, eating pattern that is extremely unhealthy, um, basically starve and then binge eat. So if you've ever been there, I totally understand. And at a point I got into a sport known as CrossFit that changed my view of food. When I showed up and I had eaten ice cream or, uh, you know, I don't know, chicken nuggets came to mind. I never eat chicken nuggets, but if I would eat processed food, I would eat uh, Cheez-Its. I would eat Cheez-Its. I would eat goldfish crackers, ice cream. When I ate those things, I showed up to class and I do the workout. I felt slow. I felt heavy and I like winning and slow and heavy doesn't help you win. So I was like, oh my gosh, well, when I eat these other types of food, I feel really light and I feel fast and I feel energized and I feel good. And that was the turning point for me where I actually started to be like, oh, well, now I have a different purpose. So even if you need to change your purpose for eating, make it up, make it up. It doesn't really matter as long as you believe it. So mm -hmm. change your purpose for why you eat something. I want to feel good. It makes me, it reminds me that I respect myself. I respect my body. Um, it reminds me that I uh, I'm setting a good example for my kid, whatever the purpose is for you to use it as fuel and as a tool and an instrument for inspiration and health, do that. Yeah. I'll, t I'll tell you my why for just, I went from being completely controlled by food to having full ownership of food because mm -hmm. My experience throughout my trials, tribulations, failures, and also my level of awareness and commitment to myself is that number one, I think better when I am in control of food, because when food is in control of me, I waste so much mental, emotional, and spiritual energy that I, at this point in my life, I can simply not afford to do that. I would rather eat like completely boring and be clear in my mind than be surrounded by incredible food and, and just feel like I'm, I lost my mind, honestly. So, so that's thing number one. And then thing number two is I got to be honest with you guys. 
when you know what your body's capable of looking like, and feel free to call me um, full of myself if you'd like. I'm okay with that. When I know that I can look a certain way, like being jacked, being lean, I am. that is the most confident me that I bring to the table, whether I'm talking to you, whether I'm talking to Aaron, whether I'm just sitting with myself. And if I know that eating this thing is going to make me feel even slightly inflamed, that's going to touch my self-confidence. So for me, like you get to determine what are your non-negotiables over time and feeling confident and thinking clearly is a non-negotiable for me because I know where I'm going. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the second we can roll into the second one. Mm -hmm. You good? Yeah. The second one. So the first one is food is fuel. The second one, which is kind of uh, where we were headed before we transitioned into this is that what were we talking about before we transitioned into this why were we were saying like we we're talking about we were sharing the story with oh the if you are in the same place at the end of the year as you are now there's a problem why is that a problem because everything is a process your body number two your body is a process it's all a process so if we are in process that means we are constantly changing whether you like it or not, you're changing. You're just either choosing to change in the direction you want to, or things are changing around you, which is causing change in you that you're not choosing. Does that make sense? So if I have a choice, I want the choice rather than just being like, here, here's what you're given, because it's probably not going to be very good or what I want. So because we are a process, there's an evolution. And there's two choices that you have. I think this is the only thing that I have to say on this topic is that you can choose to change the way that you want to change, or you can choose by default based on everything else that is happening around you. And there's two major differences. Uh, if this, there's two major differences. And in my view, there's only two options. Uh, you might agree or you might disagree. It's either victim or responsible. And, and they're polar opposite from one another. Victim is I get what I'm given and I can't do anything about it. Right. If you think about somebody who's captured and they're like actually a victim, right. A victim of something they have, they have, they, they have no control. They can't do anything about the circumstance. They don't, um, they, they get whatever happens happens and that's it. Zero control. Responsible is I am controlling what is happening around me. And though there are uncontrollables, I am still in control because of my ability to respond, my response ability. Mm -hmm. So because we're a process and because change is inevitable, embrace it and choose it. That's what I have to say about that. Yeah. Everything in life is a process. An acorn was once a seed. We were once a sperm. Your dog at one years old is going to be different than when they're nine years old. Your body at 14 years old is going to be different at 34 years old. Now, let, let's confront two things that I think are very important. Does that mean that when you're 34 or 44, you can't look like you're, you're 14? Maybe not. Maybe not. Does that mean that you can't? Does that exactly? That's what you asked. Does that mean that you can't? Yeah. Does that mean that you that you can't pursue looking whatever you looked like when you were 14 years old so that you can get whatever it is that you actually want underneath that? No one wants to change their body just for the sake of changing their body. I just told you my why. Well, here's the reality. You'll never look like you were when you were 14 because you'll never be 14 again. Exactly. Just like your face is not going to look at 34, you know, when you were 14. Like, but um, you can look better than you did when you were 14. Yes. And also how you look is, is determined by who you're being. Like, how are you bringing it to the table? Like, how are you bringing you to the table? Okay. I just so imagined a physical table like a dinner table, how are you bringing you to the table? There's different <laughs> ways that you could bring you to the table, right? You could be drunk and sloppy. 
<laughs> and embarrassing. <laughs> That's one way to bring yourself to the table. You could be um, like fine. You line. could be you could be quiet and shy and hidden. That's how you could bring yourself to the table. Mm -hmm. You could steal the fucking show and you can show up to the table like party is here. Finally, um, <laughs> you could show up uh, listening, intuitive, intent, in, in, intentionally uh, focused on what is happening around. Right. So how do you bring yourself to the table of 2024? So if there is one word that you'll want to. But and I want to say too, there's no right or wrong. It's different for everybody, but does the way that you show up for you serve you? That's good. That's good. That's all. That's good. It's not like you have to show up this way or that way, but does that way serve you where you're going? Is it in alignment with what you want? Um, is it supportive to the people around you that really matter to you, et cetera? Yeah. So if you were to choose a word for how you would want to be known as in 2024, what would that word be? Get clear on it. Put it, put it in there. Because that will determine comments. how you'll want to show up each and every single day. So here's the deal. Your body is going to go through changes anyways. Changes. Just like your skin. Like the skin is such a beautiful way that shows us how our life is, you know, evolving and transforming. And you're no different than, you know, any other species, by the way. Our dogs, our cats, they're all the same way. So it's not about reversing yourself to who I used to be. It's about when I felt my best, like what about it made me feel a certain way? Because what if you were to be that and accomplish it when you're at like maybe 48 or 52? Now, so many times I see women, and I used to be like that too, really, really get down on themselves because they're like, well, when I was 18, I weighed 116 pounds. And, you know, like, how, how can you, like, what is looking and feeling your best feel like in your current state based on whatever it is that you're going, your body is going to change internally or externally, like no matter what, every single decade. And that's why and that leads us to the, to the next point. It's it's not about genetics. It's about skill. Because, like, you can even share your story of, like, what happened to you when we came back from the trip. Like, even when you take really good care of yourself, like, you know, like, you could have some kind of, like, genetic outburst that can shift the playing field for you, like, overnight. So how you respond to adversity in life which is going to come at you one way or another at some point like you guys like let's be honest we're all going to have some kind of condition or some kind of disorder now how can we build the skills that will allow us to take ourselves away from that or delay the process as long as we can we're talking to um a woman that we met about a month ago who's like 75 years old she's super inspiring and she's like <clears throat> she said she's like one one in three women gets breast cancer and she's like what are the odds that a woman who's 98 years old who happens to be my mom would would get breast cancer at 98 years of age so she's mm -hmm. like well i mean it, so then you know like our mentor was saying well if the frequency is that high it's not a matter of whether you will or you won't, it's only a matter of time. So like, what can you do today to <clears throat> make sure that you're elongating the process? And by the way, with what's happening in biotech right now and AI, like if nothing else, do everything that you can in your power to take such great care of your health, because about 10 years from now, what you're going to see is that if you're in a certain shape if, and if you're in a certain health caliber, you're going to be able to extend your life and your health span by decades which is insane and i'm like whoa like that's amazing so it's not about you know what genes mom or dad gave you whether you were called fat whether your thighs are big whether you're like you got big hips 
whether, you know, like you tend to store more fat, who gives a shit? What are you doing about it? Yeah, there's a thing called genetics and there's a thing called epigenetics. <clears throat> and epigenetics is basically the manif the physical manifestation of your genetics based on your lifestyle habits and behaviors. Okay, so that's my own verbiage. I don't know if that's the actual definition, but that's how I understand it, is it's the way that your genes are expressed based on who what you do, right? Based on your lifestyle habits. And um, our, our friend and doctor, uh, Holly Donahue, who we've brought on the show a couple of times, uh, we were having, we we're having this in-depth conversation because I had a genetic test done. Um, I came home from Christmas with this insane rash. I literally looked like a mutant, like my skin. I still wow, have so much better now. I know, but I, 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 you can see like, I still have some stuff on me and I've had it for like a week. And, um, uh, I got these like, you know, I got it all taken care of. So it's been improving, but you know, we took a look at my genetics and there's some things that my body is just not able to process things that you would think are healthy, like d different variations of vitamin B12 and, uh, you know, potentially dairy. So now I'm experimenting with not eating much dairy. My one exception is I have a little bit of creamer in my coffee. That's it. Um, and so not negotiable. And I've lived 30, almost 37 years of my life eating dairy almost every single day. But because I have, and she, you know, we're taking a look at my genetics and I've got, you know, this thing and that, th and everybody's got some messed up genetics. There's no excuse to not be where you want to be because if you take care of yourself right, uh, man, Tammy Bell is such a good example of this. Like just the way her mind, her, I don't know if Tammy's watching this shout out to you right now, if you are, but just consistency, positivity, um, relentless care for herself. And when you do that, when you treat yourself right in your mind, you talk nice to yourself, you believe in yourself, you eat well, you move your body, you do not take the, uh, um, labels or titles that anybody else gives you and just believes them at face value and says, yes, this must just be my life. And you say, no, like the mind is so powerful and your mind is your intelligence. It's not your brain. And so if I can have messed up things with my genetics, but still be as healthy as I am today, then it's not all about genetics. Mm -mm. It's about self-leadership. It's about, you know, all of the years that I've eaten, you know, vegetables and moved my body and developed my, my mind and my self as a person and my character and my, you know, the people that I spend time with and my recovery and rest and all of these things, they do add up. So if you ever think that you know, things are not moving for you as fast as you want them, or you're not getting to where you want to be. Um, and you think that you're wasting your time, but you know that what you're doing is healthy and good for you. And it makes you feel good. Like not just makes you feel good. Like when you eat a, like a pint of ice cream while you're standing with that's your face comforting. in the freezer, that's not even that, yeah, that that's like, that's a different type of feel good. That's not what I'm talking about. Like a self-respect feel good it adds up over time and your body will catch up with you and agree with you. And it will begin to do the things that you are working towards. Yeah. Love it. So let's move on to the next part. Here's, here's the reality. You got to invest in you. Some of you guys who were here with us from the start, you said that you're ready to make 2024 your best year yet. And the reality is, is, are you ready to invest in yourself in a way that will allow you to make 2024 the best year yet? And now what do I mean by that? Life is all about trade-offs. I'm not here to talk to you about the stock market because I don't know much about that. What I can tell you, though, is that everything in life is a trade-off. You want this muscle to, to look tighter. Guess what? The trade-off that you're going to have to give is probably get a really good program that can show you that you can get more defined and invest your time and energy in pumping that muscle. And be consistent. And in it. return, your muscles are going to break down. Oh, and wait, you got to invest in how you eat and how you sleep and all of that. So 
it, it's really important for you to get this point right, this um, mental attitude right, because now more than ever, I believe that we live in a very entitled society. And a part of entitlement is one of our mentors calls it like takers mentality. Let me take everything that I can get and what am I willing to give? So like if you want if you want your body to look tighter, what are you willing to go and do for your body in return? Because for every single exchange, there is another exchange. An exchange can look like I'm exchanging my resource in terms of money. Exchange can look like I am exchanging my thoughts and my perspectives and my views and my belief system from those that are not serving me to those that are. I'm exchanging my current environment for one that serves me better. I'm exchanging, did I say time and energy yet? You didn't say time. Okay. I'm exchanging my time from wasting time on TikTok, scrolling through shit, telling Except myself- Except when I'm watching Aaron's videos. It's not a waste of time. <clears throat> to, telling myself I don't have time to work out, to actually getting my ass up before the crack of dawn when it's still cold outside and going to get a workout. Everything in life is an exchange. And the problem in today's society, and if you're a parent- I really hope that you're teaching your kids the value of nothing in life is free. Because when you think that everything in life is free or that somebody owes you something, Aaron earlier talked about the, the difference between victim and responsibility. You're actually going to find yourself in the biggest trap ever. When you know that everything in life must be earned, Rent is due every single day. One of our friends, Bedros Koulian, he calls it a kill mentality. You wake up every single morning and you're ready to go. You're not thinking about things that are holding you back, about what happened one year ago. And I'm not saying that our emotions are not valid. Please make sure you understand that. However, do not let your emotions stand in your way of making a courageous decision that is that needs to create some kind of exchange that is going to take you from point A to point B. Why is it that 90% of people who create a New Year's resolution are have completely forgotten and have gave up on executing whatever they said, New Year, New Me? Now, here in this community and movement, we are committed as your leaders to making sure that that doesn't happen. And in order for us to prepare you for that, we got to train your mind. Because if you think that, you know, new year, new me, and it's time for me to put in the work, it's time for me to invest in myself in time, uh, blood, sweat, and tears, having difficult conversation, investing in myself. So I increase my self-worth, get in front of powerful people who are connected to other people who can help me to solve my problems. And I don't do that. Guess what? Your life is going to stay the same. And what did Aaron say about your life staying the same? Nothing in life stays the same. Whatever stays the same in life is actually a stand, it, it, it's a slow decline. So you get to choose that this is a journey of self-development. It's not a diet. It's not a quick fix. It's not a detox. And I'm not telling you that there is no value in these things. If you are looking for a sustainable badass body transformation, you cannot take it as face value of this is a template or, you know, like this is this third 30 day detox or challenge or all of that. Like, sure, these things can be a great like point of execution. But the thing is, is what are you willing to do about yourself to become the best version of yourself? In one of the books that I'm reading, Actually, I got to a point today where it said the ladder is lonely at the top. Why? Because the higher you want to go, the less people there are there. Why is that? Because with every new height 
with every new level, you face new challenges, normally greater challenges of what are you willing to exchange? And the question is, is what are you willing to exchange this year in order to become whatever ward you said you're going to be? Are you willing? So I saw one of you guys said discomfort, uh, sorry, discipline. Okay, you want to be disciplined? You better be prepared to overcome discomfort. You better be prepared to overcome criticism. You better be prepared to maybe feeling left out sometimes. So what are you going to do about it? You want to add anything? No, I just want to, you know, if you've already been around for a while, you already are used to us getting passionate. If you have it and you're new here, welcome. We'll get passionate from time to time. Mm -hmm. Know that we're not yelling at you. We're yelling to inspire you. We're not even it comes yelling. from ear yelling. It comes from like so much like hear this, hear this, mm -hmm. right? Um, em emotion. Uh, I heard Grant Cardone one time say it, to emote, like emotion means to move. Mm -hmm. And so if something doesn't move you, then nothing changes, right? So to feel deeply like, oh, like there will be things where you're like, man, that didn't feel good. Or like, bitch, how could she say that? <laughs> but listen, if that's the way that you feel, it hits you for a reason. This is where the phrase, don't shoot the messenger, came in, okay? We are here to be honest. We're here to be raw. We're here to be real. We're here to share the things about fitness, about health, about weight loss, about body transformation, about nutrition that most of this industry does not talk about. And a lot of the food industry is actually working against you, okay? So- Know that the things that we're being fed through social media, through the news, through, you know, all these channels, if we're not being intentional about what we're consuming, not just in our mouths, but also in our minds, through our ears and our eyes, if we're not being intentional about what we are consuming, we will be led astray because that is the majority. There's so much negativity and all of that. So putting your place, uh, putting yourself in places like this. I literally just thought to myself today, whenever I'm feeling discouraged, um, doubting myself, lacking confidence, it happens if you're a human being. I don't care how much success you've had, how many people you've had, how much money you have, wh whatever. Everybody experiences these things. I am going to put something in my ears that gets me fired up, that gets me inspired, that encourages me, that reminds me of who I am. Because it's so easy to get inside our own heads. Okay. So I just want to encourage you keep showing up. Um, you know, this, this point number four is about, you know, it not being about the weight that you lose, but who you are becoming in the process. Because when you become the person that lives in the body that you're striving for, when you get there, you don't have to be afraid. It's going to get taken from you. If I become the um, strong, however you want to describe yourself, the, your goal, the strong 135 pound, um, tone body, inspirational human being that I want to be the person that lives in that body is disciplined. The person that lives in that body works out five, six days a week. The person that lives in that body doesn't eat fast food. The person that lives in that body um, listens to encouraging messages and invests in themselves and shows up in places that inspire them to be better. So that's who I get to become if that's what I want to be. And then you don't even need to focus on the little how many macros of this and that that we get so wrapped up in and we get so obsessed over of like, nope, I got to have, I need three more grams. And then you, and if you've got 40 more grams of carbs at night, oops, accidentally, because you didn't eat them in the morning because you wanted to eat them at night. And you're like, well, I have to eat them. I must. And ice cream, because if it fits my macros, stop it. Stop. It's all it's all a distraction.
It's about who you become in the process. Okay. So, and lastly, let so so when you want to become a better can, version, can of, I ask something yeah. real quick? I would love to know what you're taking away from this. If there's like one thing, the very first thing that you think about uh, is going to be the most impactful thing that's happened so far to you. The very first thing that you think about in this video that you have heard, seen, felt, experienced so far, can you please put it, in, let us know, put it in the comments or the chat or whatever that thing is called, and let us know what's powerful to you. We want to continue to deliver on the things that you need for where you're at. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll actually be Proceed. helpful for us to help you. Uh, in a deeper way. So whatever you said your word was, it's going to require for you to go from where you currently are to a different place. Yes. And we talked about it's going to, you know, uh, bring up new levels, maybe new devils, new challenges. And when you are facing a challenge that will, by overcoming it, you will become a higher, better, leaner, fitter, whatever version of yourself, first there's going to be resistance. So my question for you is because you cannot change what you, what you do not confront. And if you're ready to bring that word into fruition, then I would encourage you to confront it right now. I'll be honest with you. Aaron and I had to make a lot of big, difficult life decisions in 2023. And it took us a, a series of months to confront them all. It was painful. It was challenging. It wasn't easy. But guess what? As leaders of a mission, what matters is accomplishing the mission, not our emotions. So the same thing goes for you. Choose that word as if it's your life's mission this year. What is the thing that you need to confront that you're feeling resistance towards right now? Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's a place. Maybe it's a feeling. And Aaron earlier talked about responsibility. When you are responsible you own whatever you're facing resistance towards and you face it head on instead of avoiding it. Because here's what I can tell you from my own life experience. When I avoided the things that I didn't want to confront because I didn't want to hurt someone's feelings because I cared about someone because it wasn't a big deal at the time. Who in here chose to avoid something in life? Because maybe it wasn't a big deal. Maybe you're like, oh yeah, it's just a It didn't feel bite. like a big deal until it was. Drop, drop big deal in the chat. I want to know that I'm not the only one. This could be like um, <clears throat> some um, someone... I'll give you an example in our relationship of how I chose to raise my standards. What well, wasn't a big deal? That, that to me wasn't a big deal that became a big deal. So let's hear it. So Sarit going into 2023, uh, like business was my number one priority. My wife, my everything else, if it wasn't business related, even though I didn't say it, I acted in a way of it wasn't as high of a priority. So there were plenty of times where Aaron and I had scheduled a date. And you know what? I was fucking late. Not a big deal is what I told myself. It's not a big deal. Oh, yeah. Guess what? Going into this year, I'm a different person. My other life priorities are equally as important as business because without that, I ain't got no business. Yeah. And that comes with confronting different belief systems that you have or different fears that you, you know, are faced with on a daily basis. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it could be as small as like, you know, I'm just going to finish this bite of my kids peanut butter jelly sandwich. One or, bite, you know, right, one like bite, one sip, one, 
uh, you know, it's just one workout I missed. It's just five minutes I'm sleeping in. It just escalates, right? Um, and we're on number five. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, thinking about how absolutely incredible our bodies are. Absolutely incredible. If you think about you, you are a miracle. There was one sperm out of who knows how many and one egg out of who knows how many that met up and created you. You went through a nine month, most of us, process inside the womb of another human being, feeding off of it. And then you popped out, you cried, you came out all juicy and gooey and nasty. You couldn't do anything for yourself. And somehow you made it to where you are. However many years you think about it, you're a miracle. The fact that you have, uh, maybe not everybody watching this has all of their limbs. I am friends with a, actually a, um, quadriplegic. She can only move her head for my sale. Mm -hmm. She can only move her head and she has such a good attitude uh, towards her adversity and she shows up and she continues to better herself. It is all like movement is a privilege. So if you go to the gym, this is the point. This is number five. Movement's a privilege. If you go to the gym and you think that it's a punishment, you use it as punishment. You're doing guilt cardio because you ate 14 cookies yesterday. If you think uh, this sucks, this then, is boring, then it's going it's not to suck today. It's right. going to suck. It's going to be boring. It's not going to be fun. But if you think about how amazing it truly is that I have all these limbs and my brain could tell my body to do this, that is such a privilege that I can stand on my own two feet and I can walk wherever I want to walk. Like what a privilege. So my encouragement to you is going to your workouts being excited that your body can do this movement and it is a celebration of you and all of the power that you have physically yeah Even not a punishment not a not it's not a bad thing it's not a oh my god i get to do this yeah if you're feeling resistance about it remember how the way that you look at things will determine your reality. So when you look at it as, oh, this is a punishment. Oh, this sucks. Oh, I got another 40 minutes. I can't believe it. By the way, good thing you have the burn zone. And we all could fall into that. Because we're helping you to solve that problem. I'll tell you, there have been so many workouts that I'm either intimidated by or that are not fun. Actually, the higher you go, it ain't about fun anymore. It's about getting the job done. I just put it on my story today. Really? If you want great results, expect discomfort or it's going it to. Yeah. Like fun, fun is like, sure. That's like going to be the, the hook that's going to get you in at the beginning. So you can learn to become consistent. It but is fun. If you've done the burn zone and it's fun to you, put fun in the comments. It's true. It is fun. With and that's why so many people stick with it because right? one, it's unpredictable. You don't get. Uh, you don't know what the next workout is going to be because it's not the same as any other ones. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of other programs where they kind of like rinse and repeat and you do the same workouts. It's like, well, I did this, you know, you do it once a week, but you do it every single week. So then by the time the you're five weeks here, in, you're like, it's like, you're like this predictable, boring. I already know. Right. Um, it's fun. It's like, where are we at? Look at this. The burn zone. If you don't know, by the way, obviously all the people commenting, know that what the burn zone is but if you don't know what the burn zone is it's a it's a series of workout videos that we put together that goes from body weight to um different various minimal equipment building in skill building in strength so that it's progressive and there's four there's four parts in the series one through four 40 workouts and everyone was at 40 80 160 workouts and depending on however many you do per week could last you six months could last you a year and it's freaking so much fun because it's unscripted we're not pretty with makeup we're doing the whole workout with you and it's 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 a it's a very together type of feeling mm -hmm. um and i think that the burn zone should last for all eternity because it's amazing yeah um 
If you want to know how to get it, I don't really know right now. We're restructuring a bunch of stuff. Send me an email. I'm just going to put my email here. Just send me an email and I'll figure out how to get it to you. Aaron at Aaron and Sarit.com. And also um, on that note, actually, you could get all of the, actually, you can't anymore. It ended. Um, okay. They will send you an email if they need support. How about that? That's and you it. can figure out the rest. Okay, I'm gonna shut my mouth. so that does it for today. Remember, in order for things to change, you need to change. And in order for you to change, you better take a really close, intimate look with how are you looking at things? Because how you're looking at things is going to determine your longevity and also the trajectory of where you're at. And a sustainable banging body transformation is a process. It's not an event. You know, it's so easy to think that before and after event, whoo, she dropped 69 pounds in 69 minutes. Amazing. Just like a microwave. No, in this microwave society, like there's certain things that, that, that are timeless and body transformation is one of them in a sense that it is a process. Do not try to cut corners. Do not try to skip the steps because I will tell you as someone who has done that too. You skip steps, you trip. You trip. You you're trip. gonna you're gonna come back to where you were, maybe a couple steps back, and then you're gonna need to get yourself to the same spot. So there's a question that you asked. Wouldn't you rather drop thirty pounds and have it take you six months than and and know no, a it, year, like even a year? Okay, ask the question. Yeah. Okay. So I like this. Okay, this is my this is like the question that puts everything into perspective. Would you rather it take you an entire year just to lose twenty pounds, and know that you'll never gain it back, or try to lose the same twenty pounds for the rest of your life using quick fixes? A or B? Drop it in the chat. Those are the two things. We've been doing this for a long time. We've had our business for almost six years, um, and. We've we, been doing ourselves for longer than that. I became a personal trainer in this industry, started actually getting paid as a professional in 2009. I don't know how many years that is. Somebody do the math. And the two things we've always seen is either you go, you go sprint, fall back, sprint, fall back, sprint, fall back. And usually the fallback gets further and further back, right? Uh, lose 20, gain 25, lose 15, gain 20, lose 10, gain 20. And it's either that, or it's you apply what we're talking about in this video, what we talk about on all of our YouTube videos. If you're not there, if you're, maybe you're watching this on YouTube, awesome. Everything there, everything in our Facebook group, all of it is what turns you into the person that you need to become to get the body that you want so that you do not have to do it over and over and over again. And even if it takes you, heaven forbid, a year, you've already lived how many? A year is really nothing. Mm -hmm. So even if it takes you two years, three years, five years to really get to, I'll tell you, I am in like, I keep getting better and I'm no longer... I'm, I'm trying, but I'm not trying. You know what I mean? I'm not like, oh, I got to make sure my diet. And I keep de just developing me. Mm -hmm. And it makes me better in all the areas, including my health and the way that I think about food and exercise and the consistency that I get to have and the discipline that I create. And that is what makes you unstoppable. That is what gives you a body uh, like, a, like a Bentley and not a Buick. Boom. Okay. <laughs> so... That being said, it's one thing to just like, you know, sit here and listen to us. And then it's one thing to listen to this and then apply it. So action steps. So our intention for you is to now carry that on. And you might be thinking, OK, what do you mean? So here's what you want to focus on today. And as a matter of fact, don't don't just talk about it. Be about it. Show us how you're being about it. Remember what we said at the beginning of this video. In order for us to see you, we need to see you. So your point of today, your action step for today, you can call it a challenge. You can call it action step, whatever you want it to be, is do something today that your body will thank you for. We talked to you about five concepts. Okay, so based on these concepts, what is the one thing that you're going to do today that your body's going to thank you for? And 
don't just talk about it, be about it. So show us how are you doing something that your body is going to thank you for one year from now, 10 years from now, and maybe a hundred years from now, because with biotech and AI, some of us might live to 150 years old. I know that I want that. Okay. And how can you show us some of you are watching this already on Facebook, but if you're not, if you're on YouTube or if you're Thank you. um, on, uh, I don't know, LinkedIn or somewhere else that this is being streamed, um, you can come to our, our, we have a private Facebook group. It's just called Aaron and Sarit. Um, it is private. So the only people that can see anything that's posted in there are the people that are members of it. Please answer the questions. Otherwise you risk not getting accepted into the group. And and that's because we have bots trying to get accepted every single day. And, and because we want to keep you guys safe. And the last thing, the last thing is we are going to keep you updated. If you're on our email list or if you're not getting our emails, can you send us an email to, and you want to, if you don't want to, who cares? Don't, don't worry about it. But if you want to be getting email updates from us on what are the things that we have coming up? What are the live videos we're doing? What are the events that we're going to be hosting? What are, you know, what are the ways that we can serve you? Then um, send us an email. There's a lot of action steps in here, guys. Just Aaron and Sarit now. And you know what? Do I read that? Here, here's the deal. Stay plugged into the Facebook group. Um, keep keep paying attention to the videos that we have coming up. We have a lot of good stuff for you. We're here to fight for you this year. You have to be willing to fight for yourself, though, because it does not matter how much we want it for you if you do not want it for yourself. So we can only meet you, even if we're up here, our effect on you will only meet you at how bad you want to change you this year. So uh, we'll keep you guys updated on what we have coming up on our email, on our Facebook group and all of that. And so um, I think that's what I have today. Oh, and also stick around for something super exciting that we're going to start. We're going to start a series tomorrow. Tomorrow? It's going to happen on a weekly cadence via email. And that is just weekly, oh, yeah, updates, weekly updates of what we're both up to. That's what I was just sharing. And I said, if you want to get the updates in the email, oh, but I thought you were referring with regards to that. Yeah. So okay. anyways, remember, don't just talk about it, be about it. So show us today. How are you doing something for your body that it is going to thank you for? And also add the hashtag ES Army Strong. ES Army Strong 2024 is the year where all of us collectively as a group are going to rise up. Aaron and I are committed to being the leaders who do that. Now, if you're committed, don't just talk about it. Be about it and show us how. Okay. See you guys. Bye.